Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming With Me, Tony Moe. We are back here inside of Fallout 4. You can expect to hear that a lot. A lot. <laughs> in my videos for quite some time. Uh, but we're here today chilling out at my settlement because I want to talk about weapon mods. That's right, all those glorious modifications that you can now make to weapons. Um, there's a few little tidbits that I discovered in my time with the game so far that I thought were really useful that I wanted to share with you guys. They're going to make your modding life so so much easier also of course i wanted to show off some of my cool modded weapons but we'll, we'll we'll save that to the end let's go ahead and head over to the workbench and talk a little bit about saving weapon mods now this is a pretty big deal all right so the idea is that you know if we take a look for example at my uh, my goop gun here we can take a look at the actual modifications that the goop gun currently has available so we have a standard receiver we have a hardened receiver and then we have the currently equipped uh, advanced receiver. I also have a calibrated powerful receiver. Now the reason that these are lit up is because I actually own these mods. I've crafted them once and I've simply removed them from the weapon. I haven't sold them or scrapped them. By the way, selling mods is a very bad idea. They are worth absolutely no money at all. Do not sell them. They can be reused in other weapons, which is what I'm trying to show you here. So, for example, we have the calibrated powerful receiver. I could swap back to that at any time that I want. We've got the hardened receiver and the standard receiver. I can go back to those at any time I want as long as I continuously own those mods. Now, the other cool thing is that, for example, let's say I've got a compensator on this on this goop gun right now. All right. What if I want to run a suppressor? Well, luckily enough, one of my other 10 millimeter pistols that I don't really use that much, called the Judge, was running a suppressor at one point. I don't really need that suppressor on this thing anymore, so let's go ahead, we'll say make no muzzle, and then head back over to our goop gun. And you'll see that we can now equip the suppressor that was once equipped to the goop gun. Really simple system, right? This applies for all similar weapons. So, you know, all of your, let's see here, all of your short combat rifles can share mods. All of your short combat shotguns can share mods. All of your short pipe rifles can share mods. All of your... 10 millimeter pistols and sniper rifles can all share mods. Um, now, the big thing about this, right, is that for me early in the game, I'm picking up, like, you know, a lot of these weapons, they've got mods on them, and I'm like, whoa, dude, like, I want, you know, that pistol, but with that mod. And what I was doing was I was coming back with these weapons, you know, weapons like the BFG, which is running this long barrel and, you know, the heavy frame receiver, and I was just scrapping them, um, not realizing what I was doing. If I had actually gone into that weapon, unequipped those parts for the standard receiver I would have then been able to go ahead and save that more costly harder to make mod and equip it to my you know my current assault rifle so you get what I'm saying here you know you want to hold on to those important weapons that have good mods that you don't have access to because it's a free mod um, you can bring that mod back, you can disassemble it off that weapon, then scrap the gun for parts, and then equip that mod to your weapon, which may already have several parts put into it. You know, mods can be swapped back and forth. They stay in your inventory. As I said, they're an actual component. Um, as long as you don't scrap them along with the rest of the weapon, you can hold on to them and they can be transferred. Honestly, this is, to me, when I learned about this, I was like, oh my god, this is going to save me so much time. There are so many instances where, you know, I'm, I'm making all these mods and I'm not really realizing what I'm doing here. Um, the big thing was when I got the goop gun, right? The judge was the was the 10 millimeter pistol that I got when I, you know, first started the game up. The goop gun is a legendary pistol that I got off of a legendary red scorpion that adds 10 points of energy damage and can turn enemies into goo. Hence the reason I named it the goop gun. And I was like, oh man, you know, I really want some of the mods off the judge and the goop gun. And at the time, I didn't realize, so I ended up rebuilding all of these mods, you know, the quick eject mag, the sharpshooter's grip, the light porter, long light porter barrel, things I could have just transferred over from the judge to this weapon. So now I end up with, you know, two copies of a weapon that are uh, rather similar, although the goop gun, as you can tell, does much more damage right now. But just really, small discussion I wanted to have, I really wanted to talk about that, because, uh, I mean, that was a big deal for me, and I feel like it's something that's easily going to be overlooked by people, so hopefully that helps you out. Just remember, as long as it's the same weapon, you can share the mods. Those mods are always stored in your inventory. Don't sell the mods. They, um, you know, there's no reason to get rid of them. They're not worth anything. Just, you know, keep reusing them and recycling them. So let's talk a little bit about some of my custom weapons that I've already crafted. I've had some of you guys ask about my sniper rifle, so let's go ahead and start there. You can see that I've renamed it the Snipper. I've renamed pretty much any weapon that has stayed with me for a significant amount of time. I don't really focus on like a certain amount, but 
Once I feel like I've gotten a lot of kills with the weapon, it's saved my life a bunch of time, I go ahead and I give it a name. And uh, the sniper rifle's been with me very early on. It was the first um, sort of sniper rifle that I purchased coming out of Diamond City. So once I made it to Diamond City, I came out of Diamond City, there was actually a vendor outside who seemed to be very strung out on something. I don't know if it was Jet or Psycho, whatever it was. And she had a sniper rifle that looked nothing like this. Um, when I actually got it, it was running a... Light frame receiver, which was part of the reason I purchased it, because I figured, okay, that's a good deal. It had a short barrel, so I equipped a long barrel. It was running just a short stock. You can see this is kind of what it used to look like. Um, and I went with the marksman stock, got it all beefed up, and I still have some work to do. I definitely would like to run a uh, medium quick eject magazine on this thing. I don't feel like I need the large one. It's a little bit unnecessary. And uh, I'm probably going to go for, like, a long scope or eventually... Maybe something like a recon scope. Uh, these recon scopes are pretty insane, but as you can see, it's going to require a bit of time because I need to get rank 3 on gun nut, which requires like level 20 something, and then I need to get rank 1 on science, which I'm pretty far away from. Um, that's one of the big things I've noticed in looking at a lot of the modifications, especially when you start talking energy weapons, is they require science. Um, so I'm going to try and grab that perk. The muzzle, nothing on here yet. The big thing about compensators and muzzle brakes is that you'll notice they actually really can be detrimental to your to your range. I mean, if we look at the range with no muzzle, we're looking at 215, um, you know, we do get a small boost to accuracy, because you're going to get improved per shot recoil, improved recoil control, so I am considering um, actually going ahead and at least running the compensator. I feel like the muzzle breaks just a little bit too much range for me, but to be honest, that number isn't really that huge of a gap, 197 to 215. Um, you know, I just need to do some testing with it, and I haven't had the opportunity to gain enough adhesive is the problem to actually equip either of them to give them a test. Uh, probably the best place I would say to test, you know, the compensators and the muzzle brakes would be on a sniper rifle, so I'm looking forward to giving it a go and, you know, seeing kind of where it goes from there. The sniper, I, you know, thought a little bit about the suppressor, but it's just like... <laughs> The way I end up using a sniper rifle, right now in the game anyways, I don't feel like a suppressor would be efficient. Um, if I had spent more points, or if I end up spending more points in some of the, you know, stealth abilities to make my character more efficient with suppressed weapons, then maybe I'll take that on, but right now that's the way I'm going with that. Um, the Judge, as I showed you guys, I don't really use it anymore. It was my first weapon in the game. I spent a lot of time customizing it, you know, I had like... Uh, I had the compensator on it and stuff like that. I, you know, I, I decked it out, and it still does a lot of damage to this day, but really, that's going back in the storage unit. I just pulled it out for the sake of this uh, video. Short pipe rifle, just picked that up. Um, like I mentioned in the uh, first impressions video I did, the big thing about the short pipe rifles, all the pipe rifles, is they run 38 caliber. So you can see I'm sitting on 784 rounds of 38 caliber, whereas I'm like out of everything else right now. So I brought this thing back up, and you know what sucks is because I keep blowing off the pipe rifle. Every time I actually find one that is decked out with mods, I scrap it. You know, just as I was telling you guys not to do. <laughs> I scrap it like, I don't need pipe rifles, I've got enough ammo for my 10mm in my short combat. Next thing you know, crazy hard combat sequence, all out of ammunition, and I'm picking up pipe rifles again. So hopefully I can uh, go into a mission, and it seems like a lot of the dudes who are carrying pipe rifles and pipe weapons, they are pretty decked out now. So I imagine I can replace this thing really quickly with one that is much more modded out. Just grabbed the short combat shotgun, actually found it on a billboard. So I'm stoked about this, I had a double barrel. The issue with the double barrel, of course, is like only two shots. I really like the shotgun for dispatching, um, you know, like ghouls and stuff up close, especially feral ghouls, because you need something that's really going to hit hard. I can't really get meleeed on survival difficulty. I mean, ghouls in general mess people up, even on normal mode. On hard mode, the radiation, you know, poisoning combined with just getting hit is pretty much like one to two shot kill for me sometimes. Um, you know, with my armor now, if I get swarmed, it's, you know, probably a little bit worse. I can usually survive one or two. Short combat rifle, just picked one of these up. Again, you know, the more diversity you have in your calibers, I've found. Um, the better off things will often be, because that means, you know, you can kind of swap around, you can have this huge variety of ammo, and you can make sure there's always some sort of weapon that you can carry out into combat. Um, Righteous Authority is a pulse rifle that you get from a certain character. Some of you probably already know about it, I'm not going to talk about it, though. Despite the fact that I don't really have too much going on for the ability to customize energy weapons because of my lack of science, this thing still does incredible amounts of damage. I mean, critical shots do double damage, and the critical meter fills 15% faster. It's gnarly when it lands crits. My pride and joy, though, is my goop gun. Um, as you guys uh, as you saw, you know, this 
10 points of energy damage. I've got it all decked out. Crazy range, you know, good accuracy for a pistol. And we got 43 on the regular damage and 14 on energy damage now. I mean, it's just, this thing is sick. I absolutely love it. I love the red dot I've got on there. It just tears stuff up, man. Green dot, I should say. Um, the BFG is a assault rifle that I put a long barrel on. It's nothing else really else going on apart from the reflex sight. These things hit hard. If you can pick up an assault rifle and maintain a high ammo count with them, they are nasty. Especially if you take them like the rifleman perk with single shot. They're so sick. I absolutely love them to death. Um, like I said, I just never have ammo with it. And like I really want to make this thing, you know, really gnarly. You'd probably go with the recoil compensation stock. I'm um, run a bigger magazine on here, probably like a quick quick eject drum mag, so I can just keep firing all day long with this thing. Um, and I probably would put some sort of a compensator on here to reduce the recoil. So those are my current weapons, uh, well at least the ones that I've been using primarily. A lot of fun, you know, the modding system. I love being able to turn, you know, this was just like a standard brown sniper rifle into something that looks, you know, so much more slick and is also, um, you know, a much much more effective tool out in the actual field of battle. Let's exit the station there. Now, I should mention, the mods that we talked about for weapon mods, that also carries over into armor. Um, it's the same thing for armor. Any of the armor pieces that you have, you can save as long as it's on the same piece of armor. Um, late game, you might end up finding a lot of similar armor pieces that you could then swap out the mods into your armor for. So it's the same deal. You know, it goes, all of your armor mods will be saved. You pocketed mods for different armor pieces, that will all be saved. And you could carry those over from one piece of armor to the next. So keep that in mind when scrapping something that has some sort of a modification on it. There's the goop gun. There's the goop gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, I hope that helped you uh, just kind of get a better understanding of how the mod systems work, you know, not just for the weapons, but as I said, for the armor. I know we focus on the weapons there, but it, it works for both sides. Um, just be wary, be cautious of what you're picking up. If you're finding some really solid mods and you realize that you already have a weapon that you spent a lot of time customization, it's probably going to be worth swapping that mod out of that weapon before you scrap it and putting it into your slot. Weapon modding, the best thing to hit Fallout 4 since the ability of weapon attachments in Fallout New Vegas. They really took the system to the next level. I'm absolutely in love with it. You know, it just makes sense to me being out in the wasteland. The ability to personalize your weapons like this is my sniper rifle. My brother and I were talking, you know, and you think of like a lone sort of wasteland wanderer type character with his trusty dog. You know, he probably has that one weapon that just makes him so awesome. Um, you know, like the Book of Eli, freaking, you know, running around with the crazy, <laughs> the crazy knife, that giant Bowie knife that he just killed people with, um, despite being blind, which is super awesome. Alright, that's it. If you guys have any more questions for me regarding weapon modding or armor modding, anything that I didn't answer here you'd like to pick my brain about, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. A lot of other noob tip guides coming up. We've got more stuff coming up for the building. We're going to be looking at traps. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys my house, which is looking rather glorious. I don't want it yet. Just a small teaser. It's over there. And uh, just so much stuff to cover in Fallout 4. The thing I love is there's so much stuff to cover that's just like, you know, helping people understand the game a little bit better without spoiling anything. So super stoked about that. Uh, yeah, that's it guys. I hope you're enjoying Fallout 4 as I know many of you are. Sadly, I have to go back to work today, which is very, very disappointing because the only work that I want to do is building up my settlement and killing super mutants. I'll see you in the next one.